โอมาเคยโอมาเคยอาเมาลวาเอเยซูเอ็กโมไมโลกปูปูบายเอียลาเยซูเอ็กโมไมเมฆ
Hey guys, wasn't that a great time of praise and worship? I love connecting with the Lord through knitted hearts, through worship on Vid. You know, there's a few other ways that we can stay connected throughout the week. There's our social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram and our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. There we can chat online during Sunday services throughout the worship and even the message. It's there you can also share the messages with family and friends. Did you know that's sharing the good news? <laughs> so go ahead and do that. We invite you to do that. Log and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on our social media platforms. Also, don't forget our webpage at nhkoi.com. There you find upcoming service times and events. Don't forget, next live in-person service, November 21st at Lidgate Beach Park. One service at 9 a.m. So if you haven't registered, go ahead and do so because spots are going fast. So check us out, log in, subscribe, and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And don't forget our website, talk information on upcoming events and service times there. Also, you can also give directly through the website. You can also give through Pushpay and mail in your checks if you would like to through the address on the screen. So at this time, I'd like to ask all of you, if you can, bow your heads. If you can, just bow your hearts as we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings. E pudigako, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for the word that we are about to receive, Lord God. I thank you for the good news. I thank you, Lord God, that you will pour out a blessing that we can't even contain, that you would open the windows of heaven and all your children's lives, Lord God, who cheerfully give to you through New Hope Kauai. We thank you, we love you, we honor you, and we praise you. We ask these things in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us once again. And hey, I am excited today. I really am because I really believe that I have a word today that is a word for somebody, all right? I'm, I'm still in the relationship lane, still talking about relationships. And I want to look at something today that I believe the Bible is going to teach us is, is one of the most powerful things that leads to the reconciling, the reuniting, and the repairing of our relationships. Okay, I want to say that again. I want to look at something today that the Bible is going to teach us is one of the most powerful things that leads to the reconciling, the, the reuniting, and the repairing of our relationships. Okay, I want to get right into the word. Our foundational scripture today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and this is what he says starting in verse he says, I'm not overstating it when I say that the man who caused all the trouble hurt all of you more than he hurt me. Most of you opposed him and that was punishment enough. Now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. So I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote to you as I did to test you and to see if you would fully comply with my instruction. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. 
And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. So that, hear this, Satan will not outsmart us. For we are familiar with his evil schemes. That's good, church. Now, some of you may have noticed that over the last several messages of mine, they, they, they have contained Hawaiian words and Hawaiian phrases, right? And I want you to know today, that's not by accident. That is intentional because one of the visions of New Hope Kauai, right, as passed down by our senior pastor, one of the visions is to reach the Hawaiian people and to redeem the Hawaiian culture. Okay, not exclusively and, and not even primarily, but, you know, the Hawaiian people, they are an audience of our assignment. You know, your, your assignment has an audience. And for us, it is to reach the Hawaiian people. And, and the hope is, church, is that one day, some local brother, some local sister, some local Kanak will be having a hard day. They're going to be scrolling through YouTube and they're going to see a Hawaiian titled message that's going to catch their eye, that's going to capture their heart, that's going to make them tune in. And then from then on, God is going to change their lives forever. That's why we do it. Amen. And so with that being said, the title of my message today is simply this. E kala mai yap. E kala mai. Yeah, let's pray. Kulikako. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. And I humbly pray right now that you would bless the reading of your word, that you would bring a powerful, anointed word that your people need to hear that will change us from the inside out and that will lead to the reconciling and the repairing broken relationships. We thank you for Jesus. We give you all the glory in his name. We all said, Amen. 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 So, family, check this out. About a year ago, I'm in the living room playing with my kids and something happened that got my son Elias upset with me. Okay, I don't quite remember what happened, but he was upset. He was frustrated. He was angry and he, he in his frustration, he tried to hit me with his forearm. Okay, and when he did so, I blocked him with my forearm. So our, our forearms collided. They clashed, right? And as you can imagine, because he's a little boy and I'm a grown man, he got the, the worst end of it, yeah? He got hurt, made him more mad, <laughs> made him more frustrated, and he stormed off into the room. And, you know, I gave him a few minutes to kind of cool off. And then after a little bit, I told him, son, come back. Daddy wants to talk to you. And so he came, and he was still upset. He holding his forearm, he crying, right? He's still upset. And I said, son, listen, okay, listen. Let this be a lesson that many times when we try and hurt other people, it actually hurts us instead. Come on, church. Preaching already. I said, son, let this be a lesson that when we try and hurt other people, many times, it only hurts us instead. And, and he nodded his head. He said, okay, dad, I understand. And my daughter, Ava, his twin sister, she was sitting right next to me. And that girl is so funny. Okay, when I said that, she put her hand on her hip. No joke. And she said, ooh, dad. Ooh, dad. That's good. <laughs> now, church, I'll tell you that story. Because the Hawaiian phrase, e kala mai yau, is one of the most powerful statements that anyone can ever say. All right? it, is, it is most commonly used to mean, excuse me. But what it actually means, is forgive me. E kala mai yau. Forgive me. We all need to forgive. And we all need to be forgiven. And hear me when I say this, family, that forgiveness is not a feeling. It is a decision. It is a choice to offer grace instead of demanding justice. Come on. Forgiveness is a decision, an intentional decision to offer grace instead of demanding justice. And forgiveness is not sweeping things under the rug. Forgiveness is not denying hurting someone or being hurt by someone. Forgiveness in itself does not rebuild trust. And forgiveness doesn't always result in reconciliation, but it is one of the most powerful things that we can offer to someone else and that we can even do for ourselves, right? Sometimes we gotta, we gotta forgive ourselves. But here's the thing, when we choose not to forgive, 
when we are unwilling to forgive, that unforgiveness, it works the same way as that incident between Elias and I. It works the same way as that interaction between me and Elias. That unforgiveness, instead of hurting others, it actually hurts us. And unforgiveness is the exact opposite of how God desires for us to live, how he, has, how he expects us to live, and how he has called us to live. Amen? In our scripture today, the Apostle Paul, he is addressing an, an in-house incident that required forgiveness. And, and what we got to catch today, first off, right off the bat, is that he's speaking, he's writing to the believers in Corinth. You cannot miss that detail, family. He's writing to people who go church. You know what that tells me? Is that forgiveness is necessary within the church just as much as it is outside of the church. Come on. In fact, in my observation and in my experience, many times forgiveness is required and it is necessary amongst believers more than we tend to acknowledge and more than we'd like to admit. Come on now. We're going there today, family. Let's get real. Forgiveness is required and necessary amongst believers more than we tend to acknowledge and, and more than we'd like to admit. Now hear this, family. No matter how long you've been going to church, no amount of faith exempts you from needing to forgive. Come on. No matter how long you've been going to church, no matter how long you've been serving, no matter where you serve, no matter how much faith you have, no amount of faith exempts you from needing to forgive or, or needing to be forgiven. Can I get an amen to that? And so Paul says in verse 5, he says, I'm not overstating it when I say that the man who caused all the trouble hurt all of you more than he hurt me. And church, I love this because Paul is not denying the fact that something would happen. He, he recognizing, he's saying, yeah, there was some drama. Some things went down within the church that that needed to be addressed. And, and the reality that he's recognizing is that the one guarantee that can come with any relationship, the one guarantee that can come with any fellowship, that can come with any partnership is pain. Come on, church. Coming into fellowship with somebody, into partnership with someone, it doesn't guarantee peace. It does not guarantee prosperity, but guarantee at some point, gonna have pain. At some point, you're going to get hurt. And what Paul is trying to tell the church in Corinth is that if that pain and that hurt is left unaddressed, it's going to lead to unforgiveness. And so he says this in verse 6, Most of you opposed him, and that was punishment enough. Now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Mm, he says it is time to forgive. He says, it is time to forgive. He says, it is time to forgive. I don't know who needs to hear this, church. Somebody needs to hear this. We all get hurt. We all get disappointed. We all get betrayed. We all get abandoned. But at some point, at some time, it is time. At some point, at some time, it is time to forgive. It is time to let go. It is time to be freed from the chains of unforgiveness. And it is time to walk into the, the freedom, and the peace, and the joy that God has for you. Wh whoever needs to hear this, God is saying today, it is time to forgive. Amen. He says, now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. Verse 8, so I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. Paul says, it's time to forgive and reaffirm your love. He says, forgive and love. In other words, the two, they go hand in hand. You have one, you got to have the other. I'll prove it to you. Uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. It says, forgive one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. I love that church because 
it tells me that the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, Christ himself was a result of God's love and his forgiveness. Come on. The gospel's existence is a result of God's love and his forgiveness. And, and this is so powerful for us to understand. It's so powerful because it means that as believers, we, we're not truly living the gospel if we're not forgiving. Come on, come on. We're not truly living the gospel if we are not forgiving. A forgiving heart is at the heart of Christianity. The more and more you forgive, the more and more you become like Christ. You cannot truly call yourself a Christian if you are not forgiving. You cannot truly call yourself a believer of Jesus Christ if you are not practicing the act of forgiveness. Come on, church. There are only a few things that take you from being a make-believer to being a real believer, to being a true believer. And, and forgiveness is one of them. And so when we love and when we forgive, we are simply doing for others what God has already done for us. Amen. Verse 9, Paul says, I wrote to you as I did to test you and see if you would fully comply with my instructions. With my instructions. Now, I believe scripture teaches us that instructions is God's preferred method to teach us. His preferred method to test us. And many times, God's instructions, they will come through the vessel of another person. Many times God's instructions gonna come through your pastor, gonna come through your preacher, gonna come through your parent, gonna come through your spouse, gonna come through Paul in this case, right? His instructions come through the vessel of another person. And, and what I've learned is what makes following God's instructions hard sometimes, what makes it difficult is that although it's his preference, it's not always ours. Come on, church. Our obedience is tested most when an instruction from God is not our preference. Oh, come on. Let me say that again. Our obedience is tested most when an instruction from God is not our preference. And maybe for some of you today, it's not your preference to forgive the one who hurt you. Maybe it's not your preference to forgive the one who abandoned you. Maybe it is not your preference to go and ask to be forgiven. Maybe it's not your preference. But, but when Jesus told Peter to forgive 70 times 7, that was not a suggestion. That was an instruction. Jesus was instructing Peter to forgive as many times as is necessary and as often as is necessary. And so the question today is, although it may not be your preference, are you willing to obey and forgive. Verse 10, Paul says, When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit, so that, you got to hear this, Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Another version says, so that Satan will not outwit us. Church, please don't miss this. If you get anything, you, you got to catch this. Paul says, forgive so that Satan will not outsmart you. He says, he says, forgive so that you don't remain unaware of Satan's schemes. Okay, follow me here. A scheme is a strategy specifically used to defeat an opponent. A scheme is a strategy specifically used to attain victory. For example, it's football season, right? Right now. And throughout the whole country, all of these football teams, they all have their own offensive scheme and their own defensive scheme. It's, it's, a, it's a strategy to attain victory. It's a strategy to defeat your opponent. And what we got to know today, church, is that Satan is strategic. He's strategic. He's not random. He strategizes. He schemes. Scheming, strategizing. That is all a part of his act of spiritual warfare. And, and, and when we choose not to forgive, when we 
are unwilling to forgive, that unforgiveness, it plays right into his schemes. Come on. When we choose not to forgive, it plays right into his, his strategies, church, his schemes. He got you right where he wants you. But when we choose to forgive, or when we, when we seek to be forgiven, it prevents the enemy from outsmarting us. It prevents the enemy from out-strategizing us. It prevents the enemy from out-scheming us. In other words, church, hear me, the reason forgiveness is so powerful. Come on, the reason forgiveness is so, so powerful is because much like the word, much like worship, much like tithing, much like righteousness, forgiveness is a weapon for spiritual warfare. Come on, somebody. It's a weapon. It, it is a direct counter attack to the beta Satan. It is a direct counter move to the spirit of offense and the spirit of revenge and the spirit of bitterness. It is a weapon for warfare. Family, listen to me. Much of your walk with Jesus will be a continual battle against the forces of evil. Facts, 100%. How you know that, Pastor? Well, because the Bible says that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, Ephesians 6. And so if that is the case, then we want to wake up with as much weapons as possible, right? We want to wake up and walk into warfare armed with as much artillery as possible. And, and forgiveness is a weapon that God has given us. Come on, the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. Forgiveness is not of this world. Culture says, take revenge. The kingdom says, forgive. Culture says, hold on to resentment. The kingdom says, forgive. Culture says, continue to remain bitter. The kingdom says, forgive. Church, forgiveness is a weapon for spiritual warfare. If you're feeling that, put it in the chat, church. Come on. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. I know I'm going all over the place, but I'm feeling it, church. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. I love this. It says, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. This is so powerful because it means that forgiveness is the key to prosperity. That forgiveness is the key to longevity. That forgiveness is the secret sauce to a love that lasts. Ooh, come on. That forgiveness is the key to love that prospers. Just ask any married couple who's been married for decades, they'll tell you the same thing, guarantee. In fact, if you are a married couple and you're watching this and you know what's speaking the truth, put it in the chat, put truth, put 100%, put facts. Like if you know it's the truth, put it in there and I'll tell you why. Because, because the moment you find Mr. Right, you also find Mr. Imperfect. Come on, if, the, if you're in a single season, this is a word for you. The moment you find Mr. Right, you also simultaneously found Mr. Imperfect. The moment you find Miss Right, you've also found Miss Imperfect. And, and because we're human, no amount of love that we have for one another will prevent us from hurting one another. So they love you but they're going to hurt you. They love you, but they will offend you. They love you, but they may betray you. They love you, but they need to be forgiven. You love them, but you need to be forgiven. Come on, church. So powerful. So powerful. If you're feeling this word, put it in the chat, please. I'm feeling it. I feel it so much. So the, the point is this, is that it's not will you get offended, it's will you forgive. It's not will you get disappointed, it's will you forgive. It's not will you get hurt, it's will you hui kala. Hui kala. Will you forgive? You know, I will never forget, it was many years ago, but I'll never forget what Pastor Matt told my wife and I on our wedding day. Like in front of everybody, as he officiated our wedding, he said something that has stuck with me since. He said, marriage is the union of two forgivers. Oh, I love that. So powerful. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Marriage is the union of two 
forgivers. A marriage needs to hear that right now. There is a marriage out there that needs to hear that. Marriage is the union of two forgivers. And I didn't quite understand what it meant then, but I have learned that this principle, which, let me say, doesn't just apply to marriages. The principle of forgiveness applies to all of our relations. All of them. And the principle simply means this, that you and I, we should always be quick to forgive. We should always be willing to forgive. And we should never be too proud to ask to be forgiven. I'm going to say that again because somebody needs to hear that again. You and I need to be quick to forgive. We should always be willing to forgive. And we should never be too proud to ask to be forgiven. We should never be too proud to say, Ekala mai yao. Forgive. Hey church, I hope you received this word today. I truly do. I know it was heavy, hot. I was all over the place, but I hope you receive it. Please know that God would not give me this word if I didn't need it. And he would not authorize me to share it with you if, if you didn't need to hear it. And what I see, what I sense is that in this season, so many of us are harboring unforgiveness. So many of us are unwilling to forgive. So many of us are hanging on to offense and resentment and bitterness. And remember, when we do, it plays right into the enemy's schemes. When we do that, you're playing right into his strategy. But when we forgive, it is a direct counterattack. It's a direct counter move. Forgiveness is a weapon in spiritual warfare. Amen. And I want to close with this. I want to close with this. About a month ago, just a month ago, my, my youngest daughter, Maya, she did something she wasn't supposed to do. She did something that um, hurt me. Like, I didn't get injured, but I was like, ah, ah, you know, I got hurt, right? And I think based on my reaction and my response, she kind of knew something was up. She knew she shouldn't have done that. And so she went into the room. I think she was embarrassed. Like the way she walked to the room, I think she was embarrassed. I think she was shamed. So, so she went walking in the room. I could hear her like crying. And my wife, Crystal, she went to the room and she tried to console her and talk to her. And after a few minutes, Maya, she, she came back out and came up to me. She was kind of hesitant. She came up to me and so adorably, I mean, so adorably, she said, she said, Dad, Daddy, uh, I saw you. She said, Dad, I, I saw you, Dad. Dad, I, I said I saw you. She said, I, I saw you, Dad. She'll, she'll give me. She cannot say. She says, shh. She says, sorry, Dad. Sh she'll give me. She'll give me, Dad. Oh, I feel the anointing. And let me tell you, church, when she did that, as her daddy, I never remember what would happen. As you can imagine, Maya is three and a half. The moment she did that, she melted my heart. And I never remember what she did. I never care what she did. All I wanted to do was hold her, hug her, kiss her, and tell her how much I love her. That's all I wanted to do. And, you know, in a similar way, in a similar way, but in a much, much, much greater way, our heavenly daddy, he waiting. He waiting for you and I to come to him and and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Daddy. Forgive me. He's waiting for us to say, please, forgive me. He is waiting for us to say, Ke olu olu. E kala mai ya. I want to read you one more scripture. I love this scripture. Psalm 130, verse 3 and 4. It says, Lord, if you kept the record of our sins, who, O oh Lord, could survive? If you kept record of what we do, who could survive? Verse 4, but you offer forgiveness. But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I love this. 
Because what the psalmist is saying is that God is omniscient. We know that. God knows it all. God knows everything. God knows beginning to the end. He knows everything. So it's not that he forgets. It's that he chooses to forget. Come on. That is a word for somebody. Somebody needed to hear that. It's not that God forgets. He chooses to forgive. Come on, church. It's not that he, he forgot what you did. It's that he chose to forgive what you did. It's not that he forgot what you said. It's that he chooses to forgive what you said. It's not that he forgot the way you acted and how you behaved. It's that he chooses to forgive. It's not that he forgets. It's that he chooses to forgive. What a revelation of the kindness and the love and the grace and the compassion of our God. Amen. Church, I hope you received this word. I want to pray for you at this time. Yeah, I want to pray for you because, again, I feel like a lot of us are hanging on to unforgiveness. All right? And hear me when I say, until there is no more desire for revenge, then forgiveness is complete. Until there is no more, no more feelings of resentment, then forgiveness is complete. Until there is no more bitterness in your heart, then forgiveness is complete. But until that happens, you and I, we need the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit so bad to help us to forgive and to give us the courage to, to go before someone and, and ask to be forgiven. To go before someone and say, Ekala mai, yo, forgive. So if that's you today, do you need that? You're harboring unforgiveness, so you need to be forgiven. I'm going to ask you, like I often do, put your hands in a posture of receiving. I'm going to pray for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. And I thank you, Lord, for this word. We may talk about forgiveness often, but it's not something we apply often, Lord God. And so I'm praying right now, by the power of Jesus, by the power of your Spirit, that any of us who need to be forgiven, Lord, that we would be forgiven. That any of us who need to forgive, that we would forgive, Lord, that you would soften our hearts, that you would massage our hearts, that we would have it in our hearts to who we call to forgive, Lord. Whoever needs to hear this, help us to understand that when we choose not to forgive, the enemy has a hold of us and he's squeezing us tighter and tighter. The more we choose to choose not to forgive, Lord, but help us to remember that it's, it's, it's a weapon. And that when we're struggling, when something's going down, help us to forgive, Lord. Soften our hearts. Soften our hearts in this moment. Help us to forgive. Help us to understand the more we forgive, the more and more we become like Christ. The more and more pleasing our life and our actions are to God. We thank you for Jesus and that he died on that cross out of love and that he forgave our sins. We thank you for Jesus. We give you all the glory. In his name, we all said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, church, God bless you. We love you. Aloha. Ooh, thank you, Brother Press, for that powerful and great message. What we locals call, oh, ono. That was so ono for our souls. Well, hey, guys, that's it for today's service. Before I go, though, we want to give a shout out to all the veterans for Veterans Day. Thank you for serving and the sacrifices that you folks made for the freedoms and liberties that we all freely get to have today. So we thank you. Shout out all the veterans. We here at New Kauai, we salute you and we pray a blessing upon you and your families. And hey, guys, don't forget, I'll see you next week here online or at Legate Beach Park at 9 a.m. We'll see you then. Hello. I also am excited this morning because um, we, I get to introduce a really special guest, and uh, this person, uh, his kind is really the symbol of Thanksgiving. We see them and we think Thanksgiving, and so we get a chance to bring him out today, and, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his Thanksgiving experience. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me give a warm New Hope Kauai welcome to Mr. Travis Turkey.
Hi, welcome. Hobson, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, awesome. I appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. So Mr. Turkey, the reason we asked you here is because we'd like to get a turkey perspective on what Thanksgiving is like here in Hawaii. In Hawaii, for me, it's great, you know. No one bothers with me, I go wherever I like, eat whatever I like, poop on anyone's ka, sorry. Sir, really, so, so in Hawaii, you're not, I guess, let me say, hunted or looked for in terms of a meal? Nope, not me. Well, I, I, I don't understand that. I, I, I think... Well, nowadays on Facebook, whoa, you know... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you have a phone. Yeah, iPhone 7. You're, get, it, get it now. You're, you're, a, you're a turkey. Do you know what the T in T-Mobile stands for? Okay, okay, my bad. Um, so anyway, so you were saying... So like, you know, nowadays everybody posts their stuff on Facebook, right? So you look, they get prime rib, roast pork, poke bowls, kalua pig, all that stuff. You don't see one turkey. Okay, not, okay, not I give you that, I give you that, I give you that. But sometimes I see turkey. I mean, what about that? I do see turkeys. Those kind of turkeys is mainland frozen turkeys, not like us. Oh, eh. oh my eh. gosh. Eh. 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 Dude, eh. what happened to you? I was physically assaulted by the same people you said we were safe from. I, I, I don't Liar! <sighs> well, where did you come from? I came from a town. I was just cruising around in the beach in Aliomanu, and then they're digging holes, and I was like, what are they doing? And then they're like, Emu, Emu, get him! And then look what happened to my wing, my eye. I don't know, one place I tell you no go, you go there. Come on, let's get you to the vet. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, um, our interview was cut short. And apparently, we need a vet in the house. Thank you.